Telecom authorities have blocked as many as 120 headers operated by a group linked to a Chinese entity in the past two months based on information provided by the Union Home Ministry. A header, also known as sender ID, is a unique combination of characters or numbers representing the brand or company name of the message sender. Headers are used by banks, marketing companies, utility providers and even government offices to send bulk messages, SMS, to consumers and customers. An investigation by the Indian Cyber Crime Coordination Centre, I4C, under the ministry found that the headers were hosted from China. Following the investigation done by I4C, the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India, TRAI, wrote to telecom companies to respond within 30 days about active or dormant headers. On 16th February, to stop the misuse of headers and message templates, TRAI issued directions to access service providers to re-verify and block all unregistered headers and message templates in 30 days and 60 days respectively. The center has been trying to strengthen I4C that was started in 2020. The Threat Analytical Unit, TAU, of the I4C analyzes the pattern of financial crimes and frauds and sends reports to central agencies such as the National Investigation Agency, NIA, Enforcement Directorate or State Police Forces. India has at least 3,167 tigers, according to estimates from the latest Tiger census made public on Sunday. There were 2,967 Tigers recorded in 2018 and 2,226 in 2014. Sunday's figures were provisional and could be revised. The Tiger population has grown the most in the Shivalik Hills and the Gangetic Flood Plains, followed by Central India, the Northeastern Hills, the Brahmaputra flood plains, and the Sundarbans. There was a decline in the Western Ghats numbers. The current estimate also does not give numbers on the proportion of tigers outside protected areas, which are a growing number and a key marker of the environmental threats as well as man-animal conflicts. Since 1973, when Project Tiger was established, the number of dedicated tiger reserves has grown from nine reserves covering 18,278 square kilometer to 53 reserves spanning 75,796 square kilometer, which is roughly 2.3% of India's land area. The G20 Expert Group on Reforming Multilateral Development Banks, MDB, jointly stayed by Harvard University President Emeritus Lawrence Summers and 15th Finance Commission Chairperson N.K. Singh, is slated to hold its first in-person meeting in Washington this week. In the first, called too little, too late, Dr. Caligari and Dr. Stokeness predicted that if economic development continues as it has in the last five decades, the world's population would peak at 8.6 billion in 2050, roughly 25 years from now, and decline to 7 billion by 2100. In the second scenario, called the giant leap, the researchers concluded that the population will peak at 8.5 billion by 2040, a decade sooner than 2050, but then rapidly decline to around 6 billion by 2100. This, they said, will be due to our investments in poverty alleviation, gender equity, education and health, ameliorating inequality, and food and energy security. The UN report also said that India would surpass China as the most populous country in 2023, which it will. This, alongside our own National Family Health Survey, which most recently estimated India's total fertility rate to be 2.1, lower in urban centres. These scenarios present India with a unique challenge. On the one hand, it will have a very large young population, 18 to 35-year-olds, that is also un- or underemployed, but on the other, 
it is dealing with rapidly declining fertility and a skewed women-to-men -men demographic ratio. India is currently in its demographic dividend phase. After the current cohort of people aged 18 to 35 years turns 60, how does our country plan for an older population without a support base of younger people? Pulled up recently by a parliamentary standing committee for zero insurance coverage of livestock in 2022 to 2023, the centre is considering a comprehensive livestock insurance scheme modelled on the Prime Minister's Fasal Bima Yojana. The Union Animal Husbandry Ministry's move is to roll out the scheme ahead of the 2024 Lok Sabha election. There are initial proposals to waive off premium for cattle rearers from scheduled caste, SC, and scheduled tribe, cent, communities. At present, less than 1% of the country's cattle is insured and the average yearly premium is 4.5% of the insured amount. Looking to expand its cultural footprint in nations with which it has historical ties, including those in its immediate neighbourhood, India is planning to create a pool of experts in languages spoken in countries such as Myanmar, Sri Lanka, Uzbekistan and Indonesia to facilitate better people-to-people -people exchanges. The Indian Council for Cultural Relations, ICCR, has envisaged a special project called the Language Friendship Bridge, which plans to train 5 to 10 people in the official languages of each of these countries. As of now, the ICCR has zeroed in on 10 languages, Kazakh, Uzbek, Bhutanese, Ghoti, spoken in Tibet, Burmese, Khmer, spoken in Cambodia, Thai, Sinhalese and Bahasa, spoken in both Indonesia and Malaysia. With the advent of social media, the product of the evolution of the Internet into a sphere of communication that allows for relatively unfettered user-generated content, the problem of misinformation has taken a grotesque form. In the IT, Intermediary Guidelines and Digital Media Ethics Code, Amendment Rules, 2023, the Union Government has added a provision of a fact-check unit to identify fake or false or misleading online content related to the government. Against such content identified by this unit, intermediaries, such as social media companies or net service providers, will have to take action or risk losing their safe harbour protections in Section 79 of the IT Act, which allows intermediaries to avoid liabilities for what third parties post on their websites. Section 69 of the IT Act 2000 elucidates the procedure to issue takedown orders, which these notified amendments could bypass. They also run afoul of Shreya Singhal v. Union of India 2015, a verdict with clear guidelines for blocking content. The space age began in 1957 with the launch of satellite Sputnik 1 and in 1961, cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin became the world's first person in space. Neil Armstrong made history by walking on the moon in 1969. India made a modest entry into the first space age in the 1960s. The first sounding rocket, a US-supplied Nike Apache, was launched at Thumba, Kerala, in 1963 and in 1969, the Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, was set up. It has come a long way since, with over 15,000 employees and an annual budget between 12,000 rupees crore 14,000 crore rupees in recent years. Its first major project was Satellite Instructional Television Experiment, SITE, that involved leasing a US satellite in 1975 to 1976 for educational outreach across 2,400 villages covering 5 million people. In 2020, the global space economy was estimated at $450 billion, growing to $600 billion by 2025. The Indian space economy estimated at $9.6 billion in 2020, 
is expected to be $13 billion by 2025. The reason is that in terms of the end-user revenue, only a fifth is generated by the government. Media and entertainment account for 26% of India's space economy, with consumer and retail services accounting for another 21%. In terms of space activities, downstream activities, such as satellite services and associated ground segment are dominant, accounting for over 70% of India's space economy, upstream activities of satellite manufacturing and launch services contribute the smaller share. According to the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs, UNUSA, there are 8,261 satellites in orbit, of which nearly 5,000 are active. Till 2010, about 60 to 100 satellites were launched annually. From less than a dozen space startups five years ago, there are over 100 today. The pace of investment is growing. From $3 million in 2018, it doubled in 2019 and crossed $65 million in 2021. Today, ISRO manages four to five launches annually. It manages 53 operational satellites, 21 for communication, 21 for Earth observation, 8 for navigation and the remaining as scientific experimental satellites. The Indian National Space Promotion and Authorization Center in space was set up in 2020 as a single window clearance for the private sector. Artificial Intelligence, AI, is attracting the attention of entrepreneurs, political leaders and policymakers the world over. Most mature democracies are now using AI tools for better pieces of legislation and parliamentary procedures. For AI to work in India, we first need to codify our laws. The challenges with current laws are they are opaque, complex and there is a huge translation gap between lawmaking, law implementing and law interpreting organizations. The House of Representatives in the United States has introduced an AI tool to automate the process of analyzing differences between bills, amendments and current laws. The Netherlands House of Representatives, for instance, has implemented the speech-to-write system which converts voice to text and also translates voice into written reports. As per the Interparliamentary Union, an international organization of national parliaments, speech-to-write comprises automatic speech recognition and automated editing capabilities that can remove filler words, make grammatical corrections and propose editing decisions. Japan's AI tool assists in the preparation of responses for its legislature and also helps in the automatic selection of relevant highlights in parliamentary debates. Brazil has developed an AI system called Ulysses, which supports transparency and citizen participation. The good news is that India is also innovating and working towards making parliamentary activities digital such as the One Nation, One Application and the National Evidhan, Navier, portal. For example, various datasets such as the census, data on household consumption, taxpayers, beneficiaries from various schemes and public infrastructure can be modelled. The Epidemic Diseases Act 1897 failed to address the COVID-19 pandemic situation when the virus seemed to have overwhelmed the country. Article 309, Attempted Suicide, of the Indian Penal Code, IPC, continues to be a criminal offence. We have many pieces of criminal legislation that were enacted more than 100 years ago that are of hardly any use today. Some include the Press and Registration of Books Act, 1867, the Public Gambling Act, 1867, the Prisons Act, 1894, etc. Businesses steadily rely on digital technology to operate, store data and communicate with a more extensive customer base, propelling their growth.
Although this convergence of offline and online worlds is a boon, it also raises cyber attack risks, particularly for small and medium-sized businesses, micro, small, and medium enterprises and startups. These businesses are more vulnerable as they are still in the process of establishing robust cybersecurity means and expertise to combat cyber risks. MSMEs and startups are crucial growth drivers of the Indian economy and also contribute significantly to the country's GDP. However, November 2022 data suggests about 43% of all cyber attacks targeted small businesses and startups. To acquire cyber insurance, businesses follow a standard procedure. Insurers comprehensively evaluate the risk and offer coverage options.